Australia sent Ukraine the world's stealthiest drone. Ukraine gets the Corvo Precision Payload Delivery System from Australia to wreak havoc on Russian airfields. Wait, Australia's back? Didn't we just talk about them with the Slinger anti-drone system? Right, well, welcome back to those from down under. Good day, mate. Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force, and there's nothing I love more than talking about our allies from down under helping our Ukrainian allies in Eastern Europe. But first, when you subscribe, you not only help me add my voice to the chorus of Ukraine supporters, but you help make me feel like a big shot. And that's priceless, my friends. Let's jump in. Named after the majestic bird, the crow, Ukraine is now using the Australian-made Corvo Precision Payload Delivery System, PPDS, to destroy Russian aircraft. The Corvo PPDS is an ultralight drone with an airframe made of waxed cardboard. Waxed? Why waxed? Well, it's waxed to make it waterproof. And it's supplied as a self-assembly flat pack. You heard that right. This diminutive war machine is shipped like a piece of furniture from IKEA. Except unlike Swedish furniture, the Corvo PPDS is held together with only sticky tape, rubber bands, and glue that's supplied with the shipment. If there were a single phrase that could define the Ukrainian war effort, specifically its attack capabilities, it would be bang for the buck. In the summer of last year, I marveled at Ukraine's MacGyver army and its ability to do more with less. A year later, Ukraine is still showing the world how wars will be fought in the decades to come. According to Corvo, the soldier can assemble the system easily with minimal tools, load the payload, program the avionics module with the target location, and then launch the air vehicle. While some Corvo employees call it waxed cardboard, the product spec sheet actually says the airframe is made of lightweight foldable foam board. This material would be very difficult to detect with radar. Trust me, surveillance radar was kind of my jam in the Air Force. Radio energy would mostly pass through the cardboard. However, it will reflect some small amount of energy and the electrical components themselves will definitely reflect a little bit of energy. So the real challenge for the Russians will be having a radar with a high enough resolution to detect it from the ground. And not all radar is created equally. Sorry, I just want to pause for a second. Somebody snuck into my studio here and like plugged in one of those smelly things into the wall that makes like an aroma and it smells like sugar cookies in here right now. It's making me really hungry. Uh, it's awesome. Okay, uh, back to Ukraine. As you might imagine, this makes the drone exceptionally cheap. I mean, it's cardboard, right? It has a price tag of only about $700 to $3,000, depending on the version and the quantity. Meanwhile, the U.S. is spending over $10,000 for a single oil filter for the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. As far as specs, the Corvo has a range of 75 miles. It can travel at speeds of more than 35 miles per hour for one to three hours. Remember back in August when Ukraine knocked down a 12-ton Russian helicopter with a 2-pound FPV drone? The Mi-8 was shot down either while ascending or descending from its landing pad on the eastern edge of Donetsk, which is more than 10 miles from the front lines. This is beyond the range of most consumer FPV drones, so either Ukraine had their FPV drone operator behind enemy lines or, more likely, the FPV drone had assistance from another support drone trailing behind, rebroadcasting its signal like a daisy chain back to the operator on the Ukrainian side. Well, according to Corvo's spec sheet, the PPDS can be used in exactly this way, as a radio relay to extend range in a challenging line of sight environment. Interestingly, the Corvo only has a payload of 3,000 grams. That's about carry the one, 6.6 uh, .6 pounds. And yet, Ukraine has adapted it from a surveillance drone into an attack drone, naturally. Once launched, the system requires no further input from the operator. It will autonomously transit to the target location and land unassisted. The payload can be recovered from the air vehicle and if necessary, the avionics and the motor module can be salvaged for reuse. The airframe itself can be discarded. 
With its capacity, it can only hold a few pounds of explosives, but apparently that's enough. On August 27th of last year, Ukrainian media claimed that 16 Corvos, PPDS, had been used in an attack on the Kursk Vastachny airport in Russia with three shot down and the others damaging four Su-30s and one MiG-29 aircraft. It also damaged an S-300 radar and two Pantsir air defense systems. Remember, Russian fighter jets cost tens of millions of dollars. Bang for the buck. In this Google Earth image uh, from last year, you can see two Su-30 fighters taxiing to the runway and a line of seven parked. Good riddance. The Kursk airfield in Russia is well within the range of the Corvo if launched from the Ukrainian border, and the cardboard construction likely helped the drones evade Russian radar. And that's perhaps the big headline here. These drones are extremely difficult for the Russians to detect on radar thanks to their foam board or cardboard construction. In a post about the drone attack, the Russian Ministry of Defense's description of the drones over Kursk said they were aircraft style, which corresponds with the Corvo's PPDS design. The Australian company that makes the PPDS, Cypac Systems Limited, said it sent Ukraine 100 drones per month, every month since March of 2023, as part of a $20 million aid package. It's also worth noting that Ukraine didn't just attack a Russian airfield with cardboard drones, but they used a swarm of cardboard drones, some of which were unarmed to confuse the target. Per the pro-Russian telegram channel at Fighter Bomber, Ukraine used a swarm formation of several unarmed units amidst corvos packed with explosives. We're witnessing the dawn of swarm warfare, where light, cheap, nearly invisible explosive drones can fly in large groups to overwhelm an enemy's air defenses. I hope the US and its allies are taking note. Tactics like this could be devastating to America's $13 billion Ford-class aircraft carriers. Granted, close-in weapon systems, uh, sea whiz like the Phalanx are good, but the Navy should be developing next-generation counter-drone, electronic warfare weapons ASAP. Back in Ukraine, the Russians are learning the hard way that their enemy is resourceful, unpredictable, and highly motivated. How much more damage to Russia's military infrastructure will Putin endure before he packs up and goes home? Well, that's anyone's guess. These Russian aircraft are not easily replaceable. Far from it. Now more than ever, we need to be steadfast with our support of Ukraine's cause. Daring unconventional strikes like this help chip away at Russia's morale, or what's left of it, and show that Ukraine is putting to good use the tools that we donate. Keep fighting and keep winning. And to my Australian friends, no wookas, she'll be right. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. It helps me keep motivated to make more videos like this. I promise I won't do bad Australian accents anymore. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.